Welcome back to JSA TV Live, where we are coming to you once again from the expo floor here at Channel Partners 2023, having a wonderful time in Las Vegas. And I've got another great interview lined up here. We've got Todd Catlett. He's the Global Alliance Manager of Rackspace Technology. And then Jeff DeBerter, we've got Chief, he's the Chief Technology Evangelist. Fancy title. Absolutely. Fancy title for the fancy shoes. We have to give a quick nod to the shoes here, if you can hold them up or if we can see them. Uh, uh, well, we'll That's at least hard. we'll I have to bend. at least take I don't a bend photo. that way. Yeah, we'll have to take a photo and get it on our LinkedIn later. Um, but they're custom made sneakers, so very well done. They are custom custom made. Uh, talking about all sorts of Rackspace history and Rackspace lore. Yeah, great conversation starter. So yeah, let's let's talk about Rackspace. It's a um, you know well known player in the industry. But for those who might not be familiar, what sorts of solutions do you provide for the industry? Yeah, so Rackspace is the multi-cloud uh, services leader in the world. So we started very much as just providing, we could just call it traditional hosting. So we had, and then and then became a leader in, uh, in managed hosting, which you can think of as Rackspace having data centers, servers, and smart people. It's a great combination. We built a billion dollar business on that and really was the foundation of our channel business as well. And that over time grew as the uh, uh, as the public cloud itself grew, we provided services not only for uh, for all three of the major hyperscale cloud providers, but we were one of the first companies to even have a cloud alongside of AWS. Now we're in the top five of providing support and services for those clouds as well. Yeah. So when you think of Rackspace, you can think about Rackspace as helping you transform your workloads to make the best of the modern cloud, be it public or be it private. Yeah, just making it as easy as possible on exactly. those customers. Yeah. I wish I could say it was the easy button, but we help a lot with that. As easy as possible. As possible. We, we solve a lot of complex problems for people that are very challenged, right? There's a, a shortage of really smart people out there, technical resources, yeah. and the economy has driven more outsourcing for that. We're helping a lot of companies just get better at what they do. Yeah, absolutely. It's so glad that you mentioned that the technology uh, shortage staffing shortage that we're experiencing right now. It's such a big thing. So uh, I have to ask you about this. You recently conducted a survey where you found that 69% of IT decision makers are ranking AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning as some of the top priorities for their organizations. How, what, what's driving that trend and how are you fitting into that? So it's a trend that us in technology have been watching for a number of years. In fact, we've been at this, the forefront of helping companies be ready for this transformation. But quite simply, what's driven the, the, the massive move to it this year is, is the advent of chat GPT. Now it is on the lips of everybody who can you know use, use a browser. I mean, think of it this way. When you think about one of the most popular apps, like your Instagram, Instagram took two and a half years to get to 100 million users. It took chat GPT. I think three or four weeks to get to 100 million users. Yeah. And so that ultimately has organization asking the question of how do I ask questions of my data? Because they want to converse, they want to interact with their data the way they might interact with a chat GPT type chat based service. And ultimately that starts with the quality of their data. So it is, it is launching a ton of great conversations and projects in helping companies transform their data, clean it up, augment that data, enrich that data, so that ultimately an AI can help feed some of the most important data back to them. Yeah. I like to call it weaponize your data. Weaponize your data. I like it. It's got a nice ring to it as well. Yes, take advantage of all the information you know that you're collecting every day, and it just grows every single day. Right, right. Which helps you make more informed decisions as you go along. So there's, there's a lot you can do to weaponize your data. Is, yeah, correct. Well, and the other way we look at the data, you've heard the phrase, and, and it started a couple of years ago, and that was that, that data is the new gold, meaning, hey, maybe there's something we could find in that data that would bring value. But the phrase I much prefer is data is the soil that our businesses grow up out of. And so the way that we care for that data, the way that we nurture that data is actually how we get better at what we do and how we launch new services and offerings yeah. as, a, as any organization. We could do a whole broadcast on chat GPT yes, and could. other AI related technologies of that nature. Are there any other technologies that you two are watching that you think have the um, the ability to really change our business? Hmm. It's a great question, it, it, but it, uh, at the end, everybody's got their eye on the data and AI piece. But if we really pull back and widen the, the lens a little bit, what we find is that while everybody has those, those, I'll call them the caviar aspirations, they're still trying to figure out 
a lot of their nuts and bolts of what they're doing with their workloads. A lot of those workloads are still running in their own data centers on old VMs, on old hardware for companies that are not in the IT business, but are for some reason still managing a data center. And so what, we, what I'm really excited about is that, is that uh, in the most current view, people want to do more things with their workloads. ChatGPT has given them that excitement. Secondly, because of the transformation that occurred during COVID, and there was a lot of digital transformation that happened during COVID, the situation is ripe for some serious transformation. And what I'm really excited about is people actually doing what they say they've been doing for a long time. He's, just, he's not very excited, he's is he? He's just a perfect fit for that chief technology evangelist title. <laughs> kind of excited he? about it. <laughs> That's why I love to bring him along. He's, he's yeah. fabulous, really, uh, you know, passionate about what we're doing, right? And the, you know, the problems that we're solving for business are, they're very complex, right? And it takes a lot of smart people. And it's wonderful to see those transformations happen, right? People have an idea of where they want to get to and where they want to be. They have no idea how to get there, right? And again, with the resource drain from a, the, the personnel perspective, it just makes it harder and harder and more challenging for them to do that, right? And everything is becoming so much more competitive. You have to be really agile, and technology is moving at, at you know breakneck speed, right? And the the advent of machine learning and, and AI, and how do you take advantage and use it effectively in your organization? And again monetize or weaponize your data and, and just really understand all of this information that you're collecting on a daily basis because all of us on your iPhone, your Android, whatever, every day more and more data, right? Yeah. And it's just the nature of it. So, you know, again, it's the, the gold, the oil, the soil, it's important. And, and now people really realize that. It is. And uh, since we're here, sitting here at Channel Partners, I can't let you go without asking specifically about the channel. And how do you see the channel uh, for your for your team fitting into the bigger picture and what's to come in the next couple of You know, of the years channel, I've been doing this for 20 years, and the channel has changed more in the last 18 months than it ever has. The, the advent of private equity coming into this world and changing our community, uh, it's very interesting, right? Because all of a sudden they woke up and saw all this monthly recurring revenue. They all want a piece of it because they know that it can they can grow those bases, right? You see all these roll-ups, and so now we're... It's, I think it's, uh, again, kind of winding down. You have the technology solution distributor brokerages, now really six of them. There used to be a lot. But then you have these kind of uh, master agencies that are uh, acquiring smaller agencies, putting them all together to create greater resources, back office personnel, more sales, and things of that nature. So it's really evolving. And I think the, the pace of technology is changing, too. And so you have a lot of the old guard who have built their business over the last 20 years. They're selling their businesses, right? Bringing in new blood, and uh, and I know John Delosier was talking about that a little while ago on the stage, that the next generation, right? We see this fast change that's happening, and uh, the younger people that are coming into the channel now have this opportunity to embrace it, right, and grow and, and take it to the next level. And so it's really an exciting time to be in the channel. And uh, you know, for those of us that are, it's been a incredible journey. Right. I love the community, the friendships I've made, the people that you get to know. And, and it's funny because people will just change logos on their shirts. You know, it happens. But it's all the same people, really. And it is while it's small, it really is a, a, a gigantic. And the amount of revenue that's being created through the channel is it's phenomenal. And the growth you know, rate is, is incredibly high as well. You know, it's a fun place to be. This is, I think, one of the better channel shows that it's been in a few years. Um, and certainly well attended. I think there were like 9,700 people here. So it tells you the power and, uh, you know, it's uh, going to continue to grow. Absolutely. And Todd is our channel evangelist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we evangelist for everybody. So yeah, exactly. where, where can our viewers go to learn more about Rackspace? So uh, there's a couple of places, and I'll let Jeff tell him because, again, he's the voice and face of Rackspace. Oh, look at you. So easy peasy. Just head over to Rackspace.com. You're going to find everything you need to know about all of the products and services that Rackspace has. Now, if what you really want is to go get smart about all this cloud stuff, just head over to Rackspace.com slash solve. That's our thought leadership platform. You're not going to get a pop-up to sell you something. You can just go learn some stuff, great articles. You, you cited some of our research. We do that quarterly. We've gotten to talk to over uh, 1,400 IT decision makers in 10 different countries to, to, to gather that data. Uh, we're in the middle of an incredible one right now around transformation of applications. So that will come out in the June timeframe. And uh, so if you head over to Rackspace.com or Rackspace.com slash solve, you can find us there. Great. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed speaking with you both, uh, Todd and Jeff, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time here at Channel Partners. Well, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. We enjoyed it as well. Yeah, our right. pleasure. Have a great day. And thanks to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV Live. Happy networking.